Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop on February 16th. The day the weather is going to change. So we're going from a long period of very cold weather, minus 15, stuff like that, to today it's going to be 6 degrees. And then it's going to rain for like 12 hours through the night. And then it's going to start getting colder again with snow and everything under the sun coming. So <laughs> don't really know what the weather's going to be like exactly, but something is a coming. Okay, because I'm Canadian, I like to talk about the weather. It's just one of the things about being Canadian. Well, hello, Shadow. My assistant has arrived already to help out with the alignment work I'm going to be doing on this radio. Alignment comes in two basic stages. The first stage is to align the IF, <coughs> excuse me, uh, section of the radio. That basically amounts to working with these two transformers and making sure they're tuned to the IF frequency, which is uh, ooh, 455 kilohertz. Okay, so I'm going to uh, stop now. Sorry, Shadow, I'm going to stop. You gotta read the document again, get the equipment ready, and then we'll start the alignment process. Isn't that right, Shadow? Well, right off the bat, step number one, there's something that seems to me to be unclear about it. Now, if you look at the radio, you see where the pointer is supposed to be on here. I'm not going to snap it on, but that's where that's where it would go. It would snap on here. I also see on the carriage here clearly a pointer pointing at this piece of paper. Now I'm going to show you the instructions and we're going to try to sort out which pointer they're talking about here. So here are the alignment instructions. If you read long enough You'll get down to here. With the gang tuning condenser fully open, adjust the dial pointer to the alignment mark on the high frequency end of the alignment scale. Okay, you know what? I think it's more clear here because it says no, it says adjust the dial pointer. Well, I have to kind of assume it's the pointer on the carriage and not the dial pointer. Now, do they refer to the piece of paper somewhere? And do they call it a dial indicator? I, I, I don't think it says it anywhere else in here. Uh, frequency, range, tuning capacitor, C notes A, B, and C. Maybe I haven't read these notes. Unscrew oscillator trimmers approximately. Yeah, that's a long ways down the road. Well, Wild said they put that metal, put that pointer on the dial carriage, or fashion a pointer on the dial carriage. Okay, let's go back and look at the radio. I think we can sort this out. The big deal about this is, uh, if we, you know, this has to be correct, where this is on the string. Otherwise, uh, everything that follows will be wrong. So let's just watch the pointer and see where it ends. It ends beyond the scale here. He said, with the capacitor open, that's this way. Well, <laughs> it's still a little bit vague. So if the pointer were on here, I'm pretty sure it just centers up with that little slot. So that'd be too far this way. The pointer here pointing too far this way. It says start under here, S-T-A-R-T. -T. Let me fix my uh, camera so we get a little better view of it here. Okay, there we are. 
it's not out by very much, just a little wee bit. It's got to be this pointer. So to move it, first take a look at the string. Did anybody glue it? No, it's not glued. That's good. Now I'm going to show you a little trick here. I, I learned the hard way. You can learn it the easy way. It would be natural if you want to move this slider this way and pointing on the string to think you need to grab the string up here and hold it so nothing moves but the uh, but the carriage but in fact this won't work well you're going to be into big trouble holding it up here because it's going to tighten its grip as you go to move it you actually hold it on the other end okay, it's a little tight here okay. when you push now it'll actually loosen up and slide on the string. Slide on the string. Yeah, a little tight here. Get a grip of the string a little further down the way. You can grip it anywhere, really. There we go. Okay, let's see where we are now. I have a little trouble seeing it myself. String. The string rode up when I did that. It's been, it's been where it was for a long time. You see a little divot in the string there. Now we're just a touch past. Went a little bit too far. wonder how that would get off. You'd think they'd, uh, they'd, they'd set this in the factory. They were dead on now. And that's where it would be for good. Let's go down to the other end here and we'll see what happens. I don't know that it's supposed to line right up. Okay, let me make sure the camera's lined up. Just a touch past. Looks to me like you could set this at either end, really. touch past on this end too so we'll split the difference and say that's good there we are <laughs> number, number one task done great okay now back to reading a little more here and getting ready for the next uh, the next step okay I think the next step is to do a little bit of lubrication I'm just going to use WD-40 for this so these capacitors there's a pivot point at either end one is a point and the other one is through a shaft. I just want to make sure those things are lubricated. Uh, another issue here. I'll just, just a little dab. issue is that this rotating piece has to maintain a good ground connection to the frame. You might, you might think it's the other way around. These stator ones are on the frame, but they're not. They're insulated away from the frame. It's a rotating one. And so there's sliding contacts in here of some sort. I can see one right here, spring-loaded piece right here. And I'm just going to let a little WD-40 get on it. As I'm turning this, it feels a little tight. It's a good ex example of how a string walks on these shafts. If you watch this string as I turn it, you'll, you'll see that it, it travels across. One extreme to the other. Now this one's flat all the way. A lot of them are a scoop shape like a uh, bobbin, 
and they're designed so the string can only move a little bit either direction before it starts trying to climb up the uh, curve and then it slips back. If that slipping back doesn't happen, the string will double over itself and start nodding up a little bit. And you get a feeling if you are examining a radio, say at a yard sale or something like that, and you tune it halfway across and then it seems to not suddenly stop but seems to tighten up probably the string is doubling here could be other things going on but probably that's what's happening and if you continue to force it there's a chance the string will start kind of cutting itself that's really not it's not a hard thing to sort out but this one doesn't have that problem it has a whole flat flat run okay so this has probably got some resistance in it I'm going to oil that a little bit, and the best place to do that is back here. You'll see there's a large shaft extender, if you like. This is to give the knob some uh, uh, stability. If you think about it, that's one of the things you, you're going to grab when you're thinking about buying this radio in the store. You're going to grab the knob, and if the knob is all loosey-shaky, you might go on to the next radio. So. We're going to lubricate at the back here just a little wee bit. And that, that's enough to make a difference right there. You probably didn't even see what I put in. You do not want to try to put oil up here because you're too close to the string. I'll let the oil get there from back here. Just a little bit. Well, these other pulleys along here are usually uh, very, very loose on their shafts. They, they really can't bind up. No need to put oil in those locations. The last one is right in here. So I think I can quite safely just put a little bit right in this spot. Ooh, that's a lot more than a little bit. That'll do it though. Another area you do not want to lubricate is the slide. You don't want to put any oil on this or anything. Uh, one of my buddies he used to put wax on here. He actually had a candle and he'd just go back and forth a few times with some wax. You do not want to put oil on this. Uh, here, but it's fine. Some of that squeaky sound is coming from it. I think coming from this. So it doesn't feel a lot different than it did, but I think it is a little bit different. If you have a large resistance back here, mechanical resistance to, to turning, then there's a greater propensity for the string to slip on the shaft here. And another issue would be a loss of tension. Now, I don't think there's been any loss of tension in here. But if you lose too much tension, I don't know how you would. Maybe you replace the string and you didn't get the spring here stretched enough. Don't have enough tension, well then it could slip there too. Okay, next thing we got to figure out is where do we connect the... Uh, well, I'm doing this. I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. So, um, there's a couple ways to, to, do, to monitor the effects of the alignment. One is to monitor the volume coming out of the speaker, which many, many... Uh, uh, in instructions for alignment will suggest put a meter across the speaker and that's where I'm heading. The problem with doing that is you have to listen to what's coming out of that speaker and it can get very loud while you're doing this. So another alternative, especially with a radio with the wires already cut, is to grab an appropriate size resistor. This is a 4 ohm resistor here. And replace the speaker with a resistor. So that's what I'm set up to do. I just want to briefly hear what's coming out of the speaker before I put the resistor on and in place of it, just for some reassurance that everything's working. And then I'm going to monitor the voltage uh, on this meter here. And uh, switch it on now. 
and that should work out just fine. The other way to monitor this is to monitor the uh, AVC voltage. Um, most instructions stay away from that. Um, in some cases you're trying to stabilize the AVC voltage or most of the time you're trying to align the radio with a low 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 signal input from the signal generator so there really isn't any AVC voltage to look at. Um, now I've done it I've done it both ways many times uh, I find them both satisfactory um, so that but in this case I'm going to monitor the, uh, the volume coming out of the speaker Oh, yeah, next thing. When this radio is tipped up on its end, it's very unstable. One little knock, and over it goes. It's not, there's not much stability here, so I have to be very careful when I stand it up. I cannot have any of my assistants up on this bench while I'm doing this, because they could nose it over pretty easy. Um, but both my assistants, both my cats have gone for a, a sleep, of course. What else do they do all day? sleep and eat. Um, I need to know where to connect the signal generator. So this is the signal generator output. This lead is already protected by a capacitor I have back towards the signal generator. It's actually in that little blue box you see there. It's nothing more than a capacitor in the signal line. So that's to protect the signal generator from the DC voltages that might be in here if I do something wrong, I don't want to blow up my signal generator. So I have another capacitor, as instructed in the instructions, this is a 0.05, and this is supposed to go on terminal number 5 of switch 1. Okay, well thanks for that. I'm assuming this is switch 1. Terminal 5? Which one's terminal 5? So I have to try to sort that out now. Okay, so I'm reading up on how to make the connections for the signal generator. And uh, in this radio, what they say is if you have an isolation transformer, which they recommend you use, which I have, which I am using, then you want to connect this to the B minus point. This is the ground. But you want to do it through a capacitor, which is a little bit unusual to do the ground through a capacitor. Now the capacitor I have in the little blue box is not for the for this lead. So uh, if you do not have an isolation transformer, then they know that depending upon which way you've plugged the unpolarized plug into the wall, there could be 120 volts sitting on the uh, B minus point. So in that case, if you do not have an isolation transformer, then you connect this to the chassis. Of course, the chassis is then connected via a capacitor to the negative uh, to to the B minus. So that's how you introduce the capacitor, basically. If you don't have an isolation transformer, better to get closer to the B minus than to to be out here on the chassis. But so that's why the isolation transformer is a useful item in doing this work. So that's okay. I can sort that out. Now, where's this supposed to go? So the instructions give two places for it depending upon where you are in the alignment process. So if you're doing the first transformer, you connect this to the grid of the 6B, BA6 tube, and that'll send a signal just through the second transformer. The idea there is if the radio is way, way out of whack, you've kind of focused everything down on the one transformer, and you'll probably be able to tune your way back into resonance. Of course, this radio is not way out of whack. This is not fresh off the uh, manufacturing line, and it's also, I haven't replaced these transformers, the IF transformers, so it's not way out of whack. So I'm going to skip that and simply put the input signal on step two. And step two says, connect this to pin five of switch one, section three. I wish it said connected to the grid of so-and-so tube, an easy place to connect is switch 1, section 3, pin 5. Because I can't find pin 5, at least in the schematic. So I'm going to show you this. Hopefully something will uh, correct itself in my head while I'm doing this, and I'll figure out where I'm going wrong. You know. well, let's just go take a look at them here. 
So if we start with the negative lead, which I was explaining, connect the return lead of the signal generator to the B minus. A good point is the center shield of the 12 AT6. This is what they're recommending. Okay. Of the receiver through a 0.05 microfarad capacitor. So the return lead, the black wire, through a capacitor. That's a little unusual. It may be this is done because you may think you have an isolation transformer when you don't, or this is just a piece of safety they want to put in there uh, just in case. I don't know. I don't know. If a line isolating transformer is not used, connect the generator return to the ground terminal on the chassis. Do not connect a grounded lead to B minus. That's if you don't have a line isolator. A line I a isolation transformer operating. There's a very serious things here. Uh, something bad will happen if, if you don't do this correctly. Now, so that's the negative part. I'm sure I can sort that out. So here we are talking about output indicator and then right at the end they say I'm reading the wrong part. Come down here. Where did it go? Well, I've lost what I was reading. What's happened to me here? What happened to... Uh, oh, I know. The instructions are down here on the table for crying out loud. So here's step one. So, okay, feed your signal in through a capacitor to the grid of the 12BA6. But I'm going to skip that. That's only good for one transformer anyway. And I just want to hook up here to the lug 5 of switch 1 section 3 through a 0.05 microfarad capacitor. So I'm thinking, well, I'll look on the schematic. We'll figure out lug 5, section 3. Then I can work back and see what they're really telling you to connect to. Because they aren't really telling you. They aren't telling you grid of a tube. They're just telling you this lug. Okay, so let's go look at the schematic and we'll look for section 3. And then you'll start understanding why problem here. So switch one. So here's switch one section number two up here, but we want three. Here's switch one section number one, but we want section number three. Here, 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 where, where is section number three? So I've stared at the schematic Nowhere is there a note that says section number three. So we have to assume they just forgot to label it, and this is section number three, which kind of makes sense. So I go to lug five. This must be lug five. Uh, there's nothing connecting to it. Um, so I don't under and, and then I wanted to trace from lug five back into the circuit to see what you're really connecting to not showing up. So I really can't do this lug 5 thing. Ay, 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 ay. Now normally what they're saying is, you know, feed it right in through the antenna. Let it work its way through these coils. As weakened as it might be, it'll still make, make it to the grid and you'll get some signal coming through. Other instructions are hook it up where the oscillator is. Hooking it up there will kill the oscillator, so the local oscillator will stop, and your signal generator will take its place. And you can feed in your 455 kilohertz right on that grid. If you let the local oscillator operate, it shouldn't really cause a problem. Provided you don't, yeah, it shouldn't really cause a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up. much gobbledygook. Hey, hey, look at that. Here it is. I found it. I found it. Section 3. Here it is. Way over on the left side. So, thank you very much. <laughs> my plan worked. If I explained this on video, I might, I might find my mistake. Here it is. Okay, let's look at lug 5. Well, lug 5, they show here on the end of this diagram. Notice these lugs aren't numbered uniformly. Lug 5 appears to be at the extreme end. Where's it go? Follow lug 5. 
Okay, so it goes right to this grid number three of the mixer two. Okay, so anywhere on this circuit is going to do the trick. How can I identify? How can I identify lug five? Um, now they've got lots of nice diagrams down here. They do not show the switches themselves anywhere in here, except on the schematic. And see, these ones are numbered in order: one, two, three, four, five, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, twelve. Oh, twelve. One, two, twelve. All in order. But when we get to this one, eight, seven. Probably six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five. How am I supposed to recognize which one's five? Probably it's protruding in an easy to access way. Um, well, that's interesting. So here's the broken stick symbol, and they show it here. Is this is the end of this? That might make some sense because right now this looks like a sliding contact to nowhere. You got one wire coming to it. So what what is this? What is this? This is uh, oh my! This is uh, this is a ground. This is a ground. This is a capacitor. You're placing a ground. Oh my god, I don't know what they're doing. Maybe in phono mode you want to stick a ground on here. This is shown in phono mode, isn't it? What mode is this in? What mode? The switches indicate clockwise rotation. All sections are shown extreme counterclockwise position of the switch, which is phono. Hey, there it is, right there. Switch one is in the phonograph position. So in this position, this is grounded. Now when you snap it one snap forward, this is now, because this is a longer bar, this is picking up on here. And it stays picked up on here as you as you go across. How am I going to spot this though? I mean, there's no... I mean, if I could tell one was on the end, if I could see it, numbered right on the right on the switch and section three which section section three Sec section you think well uh, it's either towards the front or towards the back hmm. yeah it's the simplest things become complicated so we, we can look though and just see well where are they actually putting it so through this capacitor as I said right onto the grid why can't I just go right on the grid put my capacitor here go right on the grid or, or, or even go on the other side of this 47 ohm resistor uh, so uh, you see a low value resistor in a grid circuit it's often there to prevent some kind of oscillation I believe. There's the mega ohm here. Well, I'm going to put a capacitor onto pin 7 of the 12BE6. That's what I'm doing. Pin 7, 12BE6. Okay, whole mystery is gone. So, this is the tube involved. Pin 7 is the, uh, the last pin here. see a this is the terminal here you can see two resistors coming off a big one here brown black so this is like a a, a 10 mega ohm or a 1 mega ohm here I think it's a 1 mega ohm here and over here is a 47 yellow purple black 47 there's the 47 and look it's attached right to one of the terminals on section 3 of the switch so that's bound to be pin number 5 what I would do. Now the radio's not switched on by the way when I'm doing this. Make sure we're not. That's good. 
Okay. And now the other the other connection also needs to be capacitorized. They suggest this is the uh, ground point here. This terminal. Any reason why I would not take that terminal? I actually like the one right next to it here. They're connected together. It's a little better for gripping the, the clip. These clips have a way of wandering. They're um, wandering off. Okay, let's try what they said. We don't want them wandering off. So the negative one goes there. Positive one goes here. Let's do it like this. Do the same thing here. Okay, now are those in the way of what I need to do? I need to get into this coil here transformer rather and the other one is down here so no clip leads are all out of the way I think we're safe so I'm going to take off the input signal we'll leave the ground on we have a lot of capacitors now involved in the signal generator signal but we don't need to do anything quantitative here this is just see what the meter says make adjustments and get it to go higher we don't really care what the meter says itself only minimally Okay, so I have the speakers, speakers connected, signal generators all warmed up, should be set to 455. calibrate this guy now. Turn that like that. Put this up all the way. Adjust. Make the meter full scale. Okay, I just feel better when it's calibrated. So conceivably I just take 10 microvolts multiply it by the multiplier setting down here. And I know what voltage is on the end of the lead here. Not really. You need proper terminations of everything to really know for sure. But this certainly ballpark. This is good ballpark information. And I think it's time to go drink some coffee before we start this. Good. Been a long road just to get to here. Okay, want well, one more thing before I uh, drink a little bit of coffee. We should get this operating so it's warmed up. And we should sort out the uh, speaker voltmeter situation. So right now the radio is hooked up to its speaker and we are ready to start it up. Okay, let's do that. There we go. Okay, you can see the dim bulb come on over there and act normal. Give it full power. So what I want to hear is sound come out of the speaker, then I want to see that on the meter, then I want to switch from the speaker to the resistor I have over here, and still see it on the meter. This meter has a little bit of trouble, the radio has a lot of trouble, no sound is coming from it. I bet you these clip leads just aren't making the, aren't doing the trick. I see what I've done. <laughs> okay. Line down. Quick lead on the wrong thing. Wow, there's almost no volume. Oh, we're on short wave. Let's go to AM. Okay, there's no antenna, but. Yeah, good. Okay, so there's some sound. We know it's all working. Now I'm going to switch, put the meter on. Okay, 
Let's see the meter jump there. Let's check it. Okay. Now we're gonna switch to the resistor. I have to think. Always a hard part. Let's get the right down while we do this. In the instructions, it says a 4 ohm resistor. That's what I'm using here. Okay, so we have the meter and the resistor connected. Do we get kind of the same response? I would say so. Very good. One of the things I haven't done yet is clean that control. Let's do that. Because if the... Uh, Volume control is a little bit wonky. Spray. By oh, the way, they've got the wires here. They've kind of blocked the, the normal place it's spraying. I think it's okay. I think we're good. Okay. Leave this here. Go drink some coffee. Hey, we're almost about to start. Wow. Okay. I think I'm ready to start now. So, without the signal generator connected, the radio is receiving a pile of noise, and we can see it show up on the meter there. There it is. That's full volume there. Hook this guy up. Signal level is fairly low on it. Let's see what happens now. So there's there's a there's something new there now. Good. That's what we want. First thing I want to try is tuning through the IF frequency range and watching that meter to see if it uh, peaks at 455. that. Okay, so we're just going to watch the meter and arrange it for a peak. Down, down, I'd say the peak is right about there. So the number is 457, that would suggest it's a little bit off. That's really not much at all. But we'll put it, we'll put it right on. What, what, I, what I can't tell from doing this test is are all the uh, is, is every coil there's four coils involved in the two, two transformers are they all in the right place I mean their collective result is a peak at 457 I have a tool a little bit of light so I know what I'm doing so we want to start now with the second transformer, which I'm pretty sure is going to be this one. And the instructions say top, then bottom. At least they list it that way. So you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just sticking the alignment tool in. Be careful about touching this now. Okay, here we go, watching the meter. Turn the screw, the slug. Oh boy. Doesn't want to move. Okay, so so the, these slugs are made of a material that can easily crack and break. And just going back and forth a little wee bit. And 
that's not moving at all. Boy, oh boy. We may not get anywhere after all this. Okay, we'll try the bottom one here. I'm in. Okay, watching the meter. Oh my gosh, it's not turning either. Yeah, it's moving now. Yikes. That was down. Yeah, it's coming loose. That's definitely down. That's down. Right in there. I've never done this before, not listen to the sound coming out of the speaker. Well, that didn't go so well. We'll try the other the other one. We'll start on the well, we might as well do what they say. We'll start on the top. Unless somebody has fiddled with these. They're probably where they were when the factory did it. Okay, can I turn this one? Yep. I went down. That's going up. And down. Okay. And we'll try the bottom. be a little bit better. Now, let's, let's try that thing, experiment again where I just tune through it and we'll see where it's where it's happy. Happiest. Where are you happiest? Now my signal and my fr frequency counter actually counts a touch high, I guess would be the word. So although it says 454, it's really 455. Okay, watching this meter. Hard for me to tell. I mean, I'm the one turning the knob, so I have a little better insight on what's happening here. But it looks like it's going up, down, up, and back. Like there's two peaks in it. Let's try it again. It's too bad it's shaky like that. Um, I can hit it with a stronger signal here. I'm not supposed to raise it too much. Let's let's raise it a bit here. Might make it a little more sta stable. Doesn't appear to be a, still shaking around. Let's go back down. So that first slug may, may be the problem. Let's go to work on it again. Got the other three to move. The, the, the problem here is if you crack the slug, it's a, a, bad, it's a bad situation. So I'm using a plastic ended screwdriver. Okay, uh, here we go. I'll try to move it. Whoa. Don't let go of the radio. This just does not want to does not want to turn. There it goes. I can see the meter going down. Now we're not on the right frequency here. edges here they're not particularly sharp of course so the, uh, the tool has a tendency to cam out I don't be jamming too hard on it there we go that was good that went down that went up that went up this seems to be going up can't 
tell what I'm doing. I'm going back and forth with it and trying to trying to understand what's influencing the meter there. I mean, it's, when they're bobbing around, this is really difficult. Well, I think that might be a little bit better. I think we're going to take a different approach here with this in a moment. But I'm going to just go through the frequencies again and watch this meter. See, we get the same thing. Up, 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 down, back up, down. Yeah, I don't think that's very good. Why so jumpy? Uh, I did the top on the first transform. I never did the bottom again. Let's try that. Okay, watching the meter. Down. Down. Let's just try the other one. And then we're going to switch to a different technique here. Yeah, I'm going to set up for a different uh, technique, and we'll, we'll see what we can get out of a different approach. I, I'm really splitting hairs here, though. It's probably just fine the way it is right now, but uh, let's keep splitting. Okay, we'll change of plan here. Uh, with the camera not rolling, I managed to knock this radio over. Shame on me. Looks like nothing at all happened, uh, but I decided I would operate it and listen to it just to be sure. Oh, look at that. So, you can hear the tone coming out of the speaker. It's not so loud as to be blowing my ears off. I don't have the volume up as high as it could be. Here we are on the meter. Why don't you listen to what this sounds like when I'm making these changes. I'm much, much more comfortable with hearing it. So let's try this slug, which turns pretty easy. You can hear it getting louder. You can hear the noise coming up with it, too. I think everything's fine. Okay, well, on to what I really want to do here. I want to try. I won't knock the radio over this time. Okay, so first thing to do here is to change signal generators. So I'm going to take the... Connection here. Put it on a different signal generator. This signal generator has the ability to sweep. It can sweep through through the uh, frequencies I'm interested in. Still have capacitor protection on all things. And I have the frequency of this set to 455. One thing about this guy is no modulation. So if I tune it around a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch. I'm going to, I'm going to include another meter. I'm going to measure the uh, uh, voltage of the AVC. I get that set up here. Turn down the radio here. So in a lot of radios, you can pick up the AVC voltage on the top of the volume control, which would be, which would be here. Oh, here we are. Now let's see. Will that work? The top would be right here of the volume control. And if we slide this from phono to radio, you see these two are now connected. Phono is disconnected down here. We travel up, 
times. Oh, a capacitor. So DC is blocked from getting to the volume control. So we cannot just clip to the top of the volume control and think we're going to see AVC voltage. We got to either get here, which is probably a good place, or a less good place would be on the other side of the very large resistor here, because we're really hanging on the grid circuits and we don't really want to do that. So I need to find this capacitor, this resistor, and connect here in the radio and, and, and see if that disturbs the radio at all. It shouldn't. I'm using a very high impedance uh, vacuum tube voltmeter, so it shouldn't. But we need to know that. If it quiets it a bit, that's not so bad. It's disturbing the tuning of this, which is not so likely. Okay, let's do that. Okay, took a little bit of sleuthing. So, yellow, purple, orange, right there. Is it visible in the camera? Maybe not. And it's connected to a 2.2 a mega ohm resistor. That's exactly it. So we want to go on the input side of that. That's the terminal that's hidden by this capacitor right under here. That would be the AVC terminal. So I'm going to put a clip lead on that. And I mean, this, this can interfere a little bit with the operation of the radio. And I think I'm going to do it with the power off. camera out of the way so I can really see what I'm doing. Actually there's all kinds of leads coming off of here I can get on. So what I'm looking for is a negative voltage of 3, 4, 5, 10 volts, something like that. Depends on how strong the radio signal is. Okay, and it's gonna be on this meter. I have to hook up the ground for this meter. So this should really go, oh boy. What to do here? So I have one ground from a three-prong device here on the other side of this capacitor. But I really want to put this ground, which is essentially the same ground, right on the B minus. So that is sort of like moving this over to here too. I'm on an isolation transformer. I would normally make these connections without much without this capacitor and without too much concern. So I think I'm okay. Testing, testing. Nothing exciting happening. So I'm gonna leave this one on the far side of the capacitor. Put this one here. Don't let it touch the chassis, Not it won't end the world if it does. Okay, we're ready to look for that voltage. So we're looking on this meter, and 50 volt scale, expected to come up a little bit to start off with. What, what do we got on it? Oh, that's not the volume, this is the volume. I don't have the speaker connected. Still, okay. We have nothing because we have no power on it, Jim. We turn the power off. Okay, power on. A little scary having this connection there already. But only a little scary. Okay, I'll get the radio a moment here. Tiny little voltage here, 5 volt scale, and what I'll do now is I'll tune the signal generator to 455 because it's at 452 right now. This is a difficult generator to tune. Okay, so you can see the ABC action there. Wow, 
Why the tone? Why the tone? Because the radio is tuned to something, maybe. Yeah. This is actually supposed to be open. I really want to tune it where there's nothing. Sounds like nothing here. But why, why that squealy tone? Let's see, there's no modulation from the signal generator. Hmm. Well, we get the, uh, this is, this is, you know, I'm the guy with, with more than one watch. Can't tell what time it is. Um, we're at 456 here, and the pitch has, has gone to nothing. So we've, basically the beat has disappeared. Oh, what is that? I don't have much amplitude here. If we can turn it up. Can you see the ABC meter? You cannot. Turn it up. It's still a very low signal uh, being fed into the radio compared to the other signal generators. Quite, quite a bit lower. And what we'll do is we'll tune this one around and watch that AVC. Well, it sure seems like it matches the uh, that tone. That tone that I don't think should be there. end up with 456. Well, it could be my frequency counter. The other frequency counter is not as precise as this one, or as accurate, I guess is the right word. And uh, maybe 454 is actually 456. And again, splitting hairs here, but having fun doing it. Well, let's go to the next step with this arrangement. I may be doing this again tomorrow. Because I think I think time is running out here. Uh, okay, I'll stop and get the get get the next thing ready. Oh, too bad I didn't have the video running just now. So while I was busy getting some other equipment set up here, not really doing anything to the radio, just sitting here, all of a sudden it started just crackling and crunching like crazy. I have no idea what that was. I just cut the power off. What has we done here? Uh, let me get this resistor out of here. Okay, so I did have the resistor and the speaker in parallel here. That's not the best thing. But now we'll just have the speaker. Um, nothing. Nothing seemed to short out, nothing went funny, the rest of my equipment didn't seem to jump around. Just a lot of crashing came out of the speaker here suddenly. Kind of freaked me out, so I just cut the, cut the power. Could, could be almost anything, including nothing. Oh boy. Or it could be I've done something here that is setting something up for failure. I don't think so. Um, do is turn it back on and see what happens. Hey, I see another rabbit hole coming. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to put it on the dim bulbs. If there's something really serious going on, the dim bulbs will actually flicker a little bit. All seems well. It was dramatic enough that I just jumped and turned the power off. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that was. What was that?
Okay, carrying on here. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up for a sweep uh, to use the oscilloscope here to sweep. Let's turn it on here. Okay, just surprise me a little bit. That's good. That's what we want to hear. And maybe to move this over. I need to move it down. Okay, let's just go a little smaller. Bigger. That's good. Okay, so the trace here going back and forth is actually being generated by a sweep output here. Now on the vertical, which I have not hooked up yet, because I turned the camera on before ready, getting ready. On the vertical, we would either put speaker sound or we're going to go after this this guy in the same place that's what we're going to do so. this guy being the AVC Got the grounding problem again we managed to ground with this this is a two prong device but it has another wire I've attached and it is grounded just like everything in here there's, there's a ground bus can you see it yeah, there's a green wire running around here grounding all these cabinets from the two-prong equipment I have so I don't get little shocks. So we're going to hook this up here. And we're going to hook this up to the same place as this. Guess what? This clip lead, which is the ABC voltage. If the radio starts jumping around, my plan would be maybe not kill the power immediately. So what do we got on there? We got we got some weird stuff on there. I have a close-up camera we can we can look at it a little closer with this. This is this again this is not what I expect to see. What I would expect to see it's a nice line dip and then up and over. Now the reason it looks the way it looks is I'm way off the uh, proper frequency setting here. Oh my gosh, I'm on camera. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, so let, let's do that. See, I've turned on the camera a little early here. So we want to stop the sweep. Now we want to set the upper and lower limits. So, so this will be the start point. We want to start at 455. 20 below would be 435. Start at 435. We should not hear things coming out of the radio, but I am. Okay, 435, and then we want to go 20 above, 455, 475. So we ask about the stop frequency. It's way high. Four seventy-five. 75. It's going to sweep between 435 and 475. Right? 475, 435, sweep. Now we get what we're after on the oscilloscope here. Okay, let's take a closer look at that curve. Well, it doesn't look that bad offhand. Um, but one of the questions we would have is, uh, oh, look at this thing, I just, there. <laughs> one of the questions we would have here is, well, where's 455 now? Is it is it right here? The way I've set this up, it should be in the middle, but this isn't a very precise way of doing it. So now we need to introduce another frequency so we can spot where 455 is. And see how this has a stuff going on? It has bumps traveling up and down it. This is another signal that's in the IF. Let me tune the radio a little bit. So you can see on the over here something happening. That's me turning the tuning knob. Let's listen to it. Okay. 
keep tuning the radio. So uh, what these are exactly? This is an interesting thing to look at. You're basically looking at the IF bandwidth here from about here over to here. And what you're seeing are signals as I tune the radio coming closer and closer to 455 until they're at 455 and then heading out. What, what exactly they are? Now see, can you see the effect here? Uh, if I turn down the brightness a bit, it may, it may look a little better on the camera. Very tricky to show this stuff on a camera. So now you can see there's waves inside there. Let me tune the radio a little bit. And did you hear the shoosh? So we just have to assume it's some kind of interference signal that's here in the shop. Tune back to the top. Look at that one. And now I'm going to introduce, I want to introduce my own interference signal. Uh, known signal at 455 kilohertz. How am I going to do that? I'm going to do that with the other signal generator, which is still running. And where do I want to stick it? Right, right in with... together with this one. Okay. So ground problem again. And okay. So I have two signal generators feeding onto here. Another signal generator around 455. We'll see if something shows up on there. Right in this area. Well, I can hear it in the radio, but I can't really see it. So I'm going to boost it up. There we are. So, in a, in a, a more ideal arrangement, there's basically a pip that'll travel down here. And the pip is based on the frequency of another signal generator. And if you know the frequency, you know the frequency the pip's at. In my case, the way I'm doing this, you can tell when you've got one signal generator on top of the other, or on top of this curve, because the weird things that happen. Let's just do it here. See it kind of coming down from the right. Okay, so what I'm so that. So what I've done is I've marked this position with the other signal generator. So now we can find out within the limits of all my crazy equipment, where are we at? 455, a little high. Remember, this is always a little high. So by my reckoning, this would be 455. And we can see it's off. We can't see right now, but we will in a moment. It's off to the left. We don't need to listen to this. We don't need to listen to that. Because I'm not relying on the speaker signal anymore. I'm using the AVC signal. So I think what this is saying is this, this peak should really be over here maybe on the center line with everything the way it is. So I'm going to take the marker generator out of there. And now I'm going to try to adjust the uh, two transformers to move this over here. This is my, my goal. And to maintain a nice shape. We want a nice shape here. That's the idea. Okay, we'll start with the second transformer bottom. This is an easy one to turn. 
we'll see what happens. See it move, moving around. We want it over here. Okay, I'm going to go to the top of that same one. This is the tough one to move. That's about as far as I can move it right there. Okay, we'll do the bottom one again. Bottom one, bottom one. about there. Now we'll go to the other a transformer bottom. So it wants to settle out right here. But I think I gotta get this this hump over farther. Have I moved it? Over? And did we really measure the frequency properly? Okay, this is the top of the transformer. We'll just look at it over there. This is kind of where we want it. Okay, let's see if I can improve that. I'll go to the bottom of that same transformer. This is, uh, I believe this is the uh, first transformer. Look at that now. See, it's kind of widening out down there. Okay, like that. Bottom of the second transformer. Now if the radio goes nuts, I won't hear it because I don't have the speaker. I don't have the volume turned up. That's lovely. Okay, and the top of the tough one, the tough top. I'm doing all, wait a minute, I'm doing all this on restricted voltage here. Let me put the proper voltage on. So it didn't drift it left or right. It just made it a little bit stronger. Okay, top of the toughie. This has really been, it's been a lot more than I expected. Here we go, top of the toughie. I can't really move it. No, that's not good. You know, I think that's good. Okay, let's bring in the uh, other frequency now. And just see what happens. So, 455 is right about here. There we are. Bingo, bango. You can't get any better than this, I don't think. I think we're golden here. Yeah, and I've been working in the dark. <laughs> bit of light. Very good. That's the end of this uh, process of doing the uh, alignment of the IF. I just can't imagine I can get it any better. It wasn't very far out to begin with. Okay, as for the other tones and stuff that were showing up, I don't know what to make of that. I'm not going to worry about it until I have to worry about it. So, so that's it for today. So thank you very much for uh, watching this. A uh, bit of a struggle. And, uh, good. It's not making wild sounds. Who knows what that was? Thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll be back in here tomorrow to do the rest of the alignment.